Ever had a fragrance that sticks with you like a karmic fate, no matter how hectic your day gets? The kind that you spray on in the morning just once and it powers through heat, sweat, hustle and everything in between. These perfumes are not just scents and they are not for everyone. They are not necessarily the go-to perfect perfumes for all occasions and all chapters of our lives. These are all-day companions that refuse to fade no matter how hard you push yourself. Today, we're diving into the world of fragrances that are so strong, so enduring, that one or two spritzes is all you need to last through the day. If you're looking for perfumes that can keep up with your crazy day, if you find yourself in that kind of season of your life, this is the video for you. All right, they say never start a video with a disclaimer, but what are rules to us rebels? I am a kind of person who likes change. I like sampling different things and I do enjoy dynamic perfumes that change and that actually do not have the very quality that we're going to talk about. So. It's, this is why you won't find videos like that, you know, beast mode perfumes, ever long lasting perfumes on my channel issued weekly, because for me, this is a very special cohort of scents that I only go to in the craziest, the busiest seasons of my year when I have to be up way before seven in the morning and I am lucky if I can go to bed around midnight. And for those occasions, I just can't afford a more of a relaxed, mindful, bohemian, in a way, hedonistic way of interacting with scents. The best I get is those two minutes somewhere in between meetings or running around or making my, my way between offices and airports that I can like spritz something a couple of times and then that will be the last time I have a chance to even think about what I'm wearing as a perfume. However, being a perfume reviewer and being uh, becoming more and more known for my olfaction um, interests and in, in, in businesses, people do expect to sniff something when they meet me in person. I notice that's a bit of a, <laughs> that's a bit of an expectation these days. So I usually, I aim to please, and I want to bring at least some kind of scent that, that they will find interesting and potentially not too revolting. For me, that's a very poignant problem with beast milk perfumes, and it is the following. By our biology, the most memorable and prominent signals to our sensing systems, be it uh, eyesight, hearing, or smelling, is something that's bad, dangerous, awful, we can die from it. It's something disturbing, it's something we do not like, or would rather avoid. It's just the, the paradigm of how the sensing systems of humans are designed. We are designed to detect danger. So similarly, let me know if you have noticed, the scents that stay with us the longest are 90% of the time, the scents that we would rather not experience. Rotting smells, burning smells, BO, all kinds of unpleasant, annoying scents that we really don't wanna feel and we don't know how to escape. It is very, therefore very rare to find a nice smelling, pleasant smelling perfume for you that does not, uh, does not get balanced to zero by our adaptive smelling olfaction system, but also a scent that doesn't kill everyone and everything within its blast radius and that people will find pleasant and interesting to witness and be surrounded by together with you. 
It is very hard to find something like that. But I did. I did dig deep into my collection and um, some of these are going to be specific scents that I've tested and tried and they satisfy all this very high bar criteria. They don't drive me crazy. I mean, they clearly have to be super long lasting, but and they don't drive me crazy and they don't drive other people crazy. And their profile tends to survive different environments, hot, cold, conditioned, small space, large space, yada, yada, yada. And I want to start with a Rosenkur by um, Frederic Mull, created for them by Jacques-Claude Elena as a master perfumer. I have bought 5 mil, the factory mini, and it was like probably three or four years ago, and I'm yet to finish it. The Rose Courier is this greenish, fresh, I would say somewhat, I think Santal Lilaba without the pickles, pickle juice. So it's green, zesty, rosy fragrance, but there is no sweetness of rose. There is no as much of a roundness of the rose as we expected in rose-centric perfumes. And the queer, which translates as leather aspect of this fragrance, is more of this patent green leather type of accord. Leather, again, leather is a synthetic smell. Um, leather is a conditioned, dried, and very heavily chemically and olfaction-wise processed animal skin smells awful when you, you know, just skin an animal. So what we think is a leather smell is a product of a whole of that leather industry that developed over centuries. So the, the way leather smells to us is more of a, a subtype of leather products and how leather industry learned to present them. There's a lot to it and it's a long, um, an honorable history of craft, of how you present leather products. Therefore, leather has many different smells as a reference point. The green patent leather that I'm referring to is Rose and Cuir by Frederic Mull. It is Cabochar, it's a classic example that's very affordable. If you wanna get yourself a reference point, buy yourself a Cabochar, I would recommend Eau de Parfum. Um, just to get kind of a feel for it. Obviously, a lot of brands have a variety of leather scents you can try. So a more sharper, a little bit bitter, fresher, um, kind of um, it has a little bit of that slashing feel to it, that type of leather. Altogether, Rose and Cuir lasts even beyond me washing my clothes. So I have to be very careful in which points I put this perfume. But if you're looking for like a fresh, zesty green rose that has a little bit of that kind of slap, <laughs> slap of a green patent leather, that's without shadow of a doubt, one of the best picks I can think of. And generally speaking, Frederic Mall does care about longevity of its fragrances. And this is the one case when it's perfect for all kinds of a variety of business and not so business purposes. But if you're a gourmand lo lover, this might be a bit of a out of the comfort zone for you, but I would still recommend you try it. Similar, but more budget option, green herbaceous, but not medicinal. These are not uh, herbal teas, are more of these uh, allusion to sharp neon green freshness of a fragrance would be Herbe by L'Occitane. Not probably the most budget-friendly option, but so far the best I found in the not high-end boutique or niche category. I finished a full decant, not decant, it was actually a 15 mil travel before I bought myself a full-size bottle. So I have tested it ex extensively. Um, a similar concept to Rose and Cured, fresh, green, 
but not lemony, not too bergamot. It has this a little bit of a, almost, I would say like a bitter mango or lychee roundness to the greenness that I, I, I enjoy in both of these fragrances a lot. Overall, a wonderful pick-me-up type of freshness that lasts all day. The next one is something that just opened my lungs, makes me feel like a brave explorer of the world. And this is 1828 by Histoire de Parfums, a French niche brand that uh, makes all of their bottles look like books. I absolutely love their conceptual our deck a little bit our deco ish designs um, packaging concept design 10 out of 10 and they're very fairly conservative with their releases so if you want to reserve space in your memory for perfumes that matter that withstand the test of time one of those might be the right pick uh, to add to your collection 1828 is devoted to Jules Verne. Therefore, this is a scent of adventure, of finding, exploring, discovering new territories. And it's to me, it's exactly how it smells. It opens with a eucalyptus, to me, undetermined citrusy something, something. Uh, they mention grapefruit and tangerine. I can't smell anything of that that specific the middle notes though are really interesting contrast because it's not Meg and pepper which is why it is to some people confusing because it's very it literally like opens your lungs you just start breathing full chest um, and yet it has this little bit of a dusty quality that I think is created by peppery accord base notes a pine tree cedar incense and vetiver um i wouldn't call it the most vetiverish scent ever and marketing wise often if vetiver is prominent or mentioned in the pyramid it will be marketed toward men that said it has been attested by hundreds of people online and offline now that jules verne 1828 is firmly in unisex category if you like fresh bergamot -y. both dry yet softly peppery a little bit of a powdery through that scents that are not gourmand not sweet but not austere not piercing and not sharp like some of the more classic male colognes or perfumes marketed toward men tend to be this just hits the the right spot of being open-ended, adventurous, full of wind and movement, and yet not really typecasting its wearer in any particular uh, shape or fashion. This was my first purchase, a uh, full bottle purchase from Istuarda Parfums. And I, every time I need to feel more creative, bold, but not necessarily so assertive, mostly to look at my day and my life with open, with wide open eyes to see familiar objects from an unfamiliar point of view sometimes this really helps needless to say it lasts all day just like all of these here that was a necessary condition another fresh opening but not obviously citrusy cologne or you know uh, icy vetiver type of scent something that i think can work with anybody's preferences and skin i do enjoy this notion of things being not too typecasted into the bipolar world of male versus female marketing not my favorite uh, categories of scents to be in i like things that are a little bit more imaginative a little bit more groundbreaking it's Mentha Religiosa by Rue and Rue Paris. For, for the longest time, I thought that Rue and Rue were, was an Australian brand. <laughs> Go figure. I don't know why I thought that. This is the most unusual take on mint. First of all, mint fragrances are hard to find. I tried mint, oh, the mint by Diptyque. 
mm, not as minty to me. I tried many things, but in the very, very few cases, I got that believable uh, peppermint or sugar mint flavor from a perfume. Here in Mentha Religiosa, you get a thick, confident fougere, meaning overall solid greenish, but more a grounded type of scent. A lot of people will think of like thick, thick green leaves, like laurel, um, almost like crushed branches of a tree. So it's both green and woody, but it has this subs substance to it. It has gravitas with a concentrated mint oil mixed into it. Mint here vibrates in the middle frequencies. It's not this fleeting, uh, very mojito type of mint. Mint here really sits on your skin and keeps reminding you of its presence. And this is why I call it mint oil. This lasts forever. This is both as refreshing as it is solid and somewhat foundational. It, this perfume has this confidence and gravitas without making it a heavy woody, or again, doesn't make it a gourmand, doesn't make it oody as well. It's still a nice, well-centered, in kind of in the middle frequencies of smells, fougere with mint oil in it that lasts forever. Love it. A rare mention in the influencer circles, but yet if you are looking for a long lasting minty perfume, Ruin Ru Menta Religiosa. I will also put the links where you can get a sample down below in the description box. I try to dedicate time and effort into cataloging everything for you. So if you want to give it a go and with all of this, to be honest, you get a one of the trios using my link like this. I told you five mil of Frederick Mall. I'm still not done three years later. These are they pack a punch. All right, this whole brand could I could just dedicate this whole video to this brand because they are perfumes without a single exception are incredibly long lasting and they all share a little bit of this um, this impression that they create that is all very heavy on perfume oils. They give this a little bit of a um, oilier, a little bit more denser, opaque, um, weighted feel to them. And yet I picked the one that I find to be the lightest and it's also one of the best sellers in Italy. Uh, this is Perfumum Roma and in the south of Europe according to the sales managers that I talked to. They said, this is just goes like hotcakes. Somehow in the dry heat, the Aqua di Sale by Perfumum Roma does wonders uh, to people's skins. Um, it, it falls into the category of the salty, mineral-esque with seaweedy, salty, woody notes not the oceanic as we knew it in the 90s where everything was this abstract fresh oceanic um, uh, watermelon -y, cologne based perfume and not when it became very fashionable to add a lot of mint bergamot or dry lavender accords at the beginning to kind of elevate the scent. Sometimes the same effect can be created with peppery accords. Not that. It's more of this contemporary mineral freshness, mineral, seaweedy, salty, mm, oceanic, almost to the point of seafoody <laughs> type of scents that are super hot. Um, right now and have been for probably fair for four years. This is one of the best examples of that. Another kind of reference point would be Tom Ford Costa Azura, 
Beach Hut by Amelage, which all could be here, but they're not as, <laughs> they're not as long lasting and they are not as strong in character as Aqua di Sale. So if you find yourself dreaming of spending some, some time in the heat of Southern Europe, or you're actually there, know that Aqua di Sali works wonderfully in dry heat. I get a little overwhelmed with it. Um, in the Florida heat, it's way more humid. We have this kind of uh, wet sauna feel at all times in the summer and way in, like, I would say up, up until October. But in the south of Florida, where Miami is, you get, it, it's even, even in January, you can get that kind of weather sometimes. So sometimes Aqua di Sali is a bit much for me. I want something drier, less oilier, and a little bit more bitter salty. And I have a whole slew of perfumes for that. But if we're talking about somewhat drier heat or just drier climate in general, mm, Aqua di Sali, Perfumum Roma, a modern aquatic, it's absolute gem, or anything by Perfumum Roma. I have 15 mil, and trust me, that's gonna last me a decade. This was an acquired love for me, uh, and this is Rappel Toi by L'Artisan Parfumeur. That was, at some point, a limited collection, hence the way it looks, designed by Bertrand de Chafour, and if I am not mistaken, Rappel Toi roughly translates into remember, uh, and no question, this fragrance uh, made me remember it. I didn't like it at first. I was like, this is too niche. This is too niche, even for my taste. And then slowly but surely, actually through its tarty grip and longevity, that I learned to love it. And to me, this is, uh, for some reason, to me, this is a floral fougere. But... If you could make a cocktail from gardenia with honey and gin and somehow a little bit of creaminess of sandalwood and substantiality of the woody notes that sandalwood can also provide, that would be it. And it's a very hard thing to visualize. And I'm not... This, this the rappel toi is the kind of scent that becomes you when you want it to become. For a while, I thought of it as green leather, and that's exactly what I felt. But then I started reading more of a commentary online on Rappel Toi, and a lot of people were saying, like, this is so much gin and so much gardenia. I'm so confused. And then I was like, you know what? Yes. Yes, there is something. <laughs> There is something there. So again, the sweetness here is very much just rounds things up. To me, it's more bright green floral with a little bit of this alcoholic note in it. And I presume that's what they describe as gin accord. And the way it really works, it makes me feel like one of those somewhat hooliganist power suit women who, you know, have their cake and eat it too. They're as ambitious and driven as they are inappropriate at times behind the closed doors. This has a little bit of that everything. It's this like really strong, potent concoction that is like, is this green? Is it, is it green? Is it fougere? Is it leather? Is it incense? Is it gardenia? I don't understand what's going on. And why do I feel drunk? <laughs> so yeah, Rappel Toui lasts forever. I enjoy it for its kind of elusive, hard to describe property. Not for everyone, but I people tend to like it on me. It's go figure. I thought it was so niche and so unique that it was incomprehensible to a pedestrian. It's not for Philistine uh, noses to smell. And yet, like, it works. It works, it's just everybody gets something different from it. New category in my olfactory life, and I'm very excited to share this. 
are these uh, new formulations of tea-like fragrances that have just outstanding longevity. And all of that emerged as a phenomenon, I would say, in the last seven years or well, last 10 years. Let's give it some, some buffer. And the first one that I have added to my collection of this kind is Le Zeur du Quartier, Le Fugueuse. Fourth hour, okay? <laughs> Nobody, I don't know how anybody is expected to say that unless you were born and raised in French Canada or France. Um, fourth hour, or in translation, at least that's what my translator tells me, the fiery hour. I don't know why it's fiery because this is a creamy kind of um, creamy loon somewhat creamy green tea with a mate qualities in it and it was released let's double check in 2011 as part of a uh, kind of private boutique line of fragrances. They call it High Perfumery uh, by Cartier. The top notes are magnolia and bergamot. Something fresh, okay. And magnolia flowers to me often smell like lemon soap. Go figure. Middle notes uh, are mate, vetiver and lavender. I don't get much of a lavender here. But I agree, like this mate, uh, dry, ascetic vetiver, not much of a vetiver oil, it's not bitter, it's not substantial, it doesn't really do much, rather than create this overall soft green tea kind of canvas together with mate. And base notes are leather, musk and oak moss. Again, worth mentioning Till we're still uh, together on YouTube that all of these pyramids it's not that they took the actual magnolia essence in any shape or form and added it to the perfume formula these are this is a meta language that marketers use in order to help us get a feel for what it could be like trusting that we have a wide and substantial enough reference base to know well vetiver fragrances are kind of like this magnolia versus oak moss or leatherish fragrances are kind of like that and it's like your brain will do this simulation like what what what, what could that be magnolia plus bergamot mate vetiver and a little bit of oak moss at the end and you get these simulated impression which helps you navigate in the world of endless numerous releases that are happening in the perfume world therefore none of that is mandatory for us to feel when we experience any given fragrance but in the absence of any other mm, easy enough language that we can share that'll do to me wonderful soft mate-ish green tea that's what this is to me it's almost a mono accord type of fragrance i don't see much of a development of it but if i spray it generously uh, on my hair on my clothes and on my, on my skin it stays with me like this very balanced, like a whiff of meditation, <laughs> a whiff of my mindfulness is what I call this one. The Fiery Hour number four by Cartier is a really stellar example of a contemporary tea perfume that lasts a long time. And for something a little bit more a gourmand, and I would say even longer lasting, but it's it's quite it's quite a journey this is musk milano russian tea it's sweeter it's more of a bergamotti tea with uh, raspberry strawberry preserves with some spices with earl gray whiffs with some smokiness uh, it's delicious but it's yet not a gourmand. 
there is a reason why we haven't talked about uh, obvious gourmands yet though there are some that last forever i find that gourmands that last over eight hours are unbearable to be around if you're around someone who overused a gourmand fragrance to me the best gourmands in the world are, ought to be complex changing and fade into the cloud of demure allure and nothing more because otherwise they are super smothering uh, for clubbing angel mugler maybe for being around people transitioning from enclosed environments to um, outdoors handling kids other people processes meetings moving things around carrying things with you i find gourmands just don't fit into that kind of at least for me they don't really provide support that i need through a crazy day and most likely than not they will smother people around me if i apply it generously enough so it lasts all day so mask milano uh and specifically russian tea is kind of carefully walking that razor blade it's solid respectful right like tea fragrances they're very respectful they're very balanced they're they're kind of Mm -hmm. reputation enhancing type of an olfaction profile if you think about it so they're very appropriate but adding a little bit of this like sweetness of fruit and berry preserves just gives it a little bit of the mm, that's good this is why i love it i love it it works beautifully in humid weather and hot cold weather rainy weather i tried it at this point throughout from uh, the the J July of in Florida heat to the um, incredibly freezing hailing winds and rain of um, rural Norway mountains and it just works it works it works for hiking it works for business meetings it works for a relaxing night out and the last two are gonna be I think as close as I can get to gourmands without again with still respecting the fact that when we are really really busy we're usually also quite social so as close as it gets to a fruitier gourmand while still keeping you professional collected and on point on your goal is fig ecstasy by Mancera or in the French pronunciation, Mansera, I guess. Sister brand of Mantal, both Mansera, Mansera and Mantal uh, are brands that bank their reputation on being strong and long lasting. This is the one that I fell in love with because it departs from the old legacy of Mantal and Mansera of these like super duper sweet chloe syrupy uh, roses and musk type of perfumes fig ecstasy is does it does not bank too much on the sweetness and milky vanilla sweetness of fig as a fruit it preserves just enough and gives it a somewhat i wouldn't say screechy but it's a, like a crunchy crunchy feel of a roth suede there's something about it that is green it, it's like a whole branch of a fig tree with its woody aspects with the somewhat scratchy aspects of branches and the greenness of leaves and just a little bit of this trace of soft sweetness of the fig as a fruit and it's done with such respect to the legacy of Mancera of them being known for producing this likable youthful easy to understand gourmand-ish fragrances and and keeping it in this 
beautifully ambiguous unisex space. You, I cannot call this female or male. It's just what it is. It's this green, somewhat textured, woody fragrance with a hint of fig sweetness. A beautiful contempor contemporary reimagined mm, reimagined Mancera for me is fig ecstasy. And it's again, it's sweet enough, but it's still got this pull together, stay with me all day type of character. And the only spices upon spices with spices, tipped off with spices perfume that has amazing projection, diffuseness, semi-sweet, not too dusty, not too aged or dated, and yet lasts forever. Spicy perfumes tend to, or peppery perfumes, tend to not last at all. This is usually considered one of the top to middle notes that kind of just comes and goes, but never is um, the, the ingredient for the beast mode, mm, longer staying fragrance. But, oh my God, there is one. The re if you're looking for a s all spices you can imagine that last forever, forever, it's Salvador Ferragamo La Camellia. This is my backup bottle, just so you can see what it looks like. Not that easy to find in person, but you can find them online and you can get yourself a decant. I think I will forever be working from this 15 mil. I made myself a generous decant because I broke my first bottle and I've been working and working and working through it. And it's just two sprays for five days. That's how long it lasts. It is all La Comedia by Salvador Ferragamo is this interesting combination of culinary culinary peppers and what we call gourmand peppers with what we call black spices, dry spices, more like smoky black peppers. They took every imaginable impression of what a pepper, Bulgarian pepper in your salad, um, spicy hot peppers, Szechuan peppers, in in the you know the spicy food black pepper almost gunpowder for like dark dry austere black spices with sweetness and flirtatiousness of pink pepper and all these kind of slightly dizzying sparkly peppery accords that we love in um, sometimes florals and put it in one bottle that's my selection of 10. I did not make videos like that very often, so consider this to be like one of the <laughs> chapters in the Bible of, of my olfaction Bible. I, I do use these in the times of need. That said, still a disclaimer, my heart with perfumes that are a little bit more watercolory, a little bit more complex, and the ones that are more dynamic and really change and evolve through time. I find the the more of a beast mode of a perfume you're trying to make, the more restricted and monotone it will sound. That's not everybody's cup of tea, despite the popular opinion, I think. So these I love, I wear, despite that not being my go-to stylistic choice. I hope you will try some of these and let me know what you think. Let's extend this list for a variety of tastes, cultures, and environments. I would love to hear your recommendations. All the links to anything that you want to try are down below in the description box. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. It really does matter on the lonely, hot, humid, Florida nights that I have to endure. See you in the next video. 
Hey there, you've reached the end, but don't just depart. Hit like, subscribe, it's a way to take part. Your support, your love, it's an art. Together we grow, play our part in this job. It's more than a clip, it's a bridge, a connection, no way to sustain. To fuel this direction, each like each sub. Show perfection, we're in this together, seeking perfection. Like and subscribe, be the vibe, keep us alive. In this digital sea, it's how we fly. Your support is the core of the drive. In this world of content, we're the prototype. Donations, contributions to keep the lights on. Fueling our passion from dusk till dawn. It's not just content, it's a bond that's strong with your head.